welcome to another up close video. Today's one is for Tonic Showcase number 29, which is the Little Star gift box. I'm sorry this one is a couple of days late because it launched a few days ago, um, but I got carried away with the samples. I've made um, an actual star gift box that it's supposed to make, which is really cool actually. I really love this one. Um, I've also done three cards and I've also got an alternative way of kind of like building it. I haven't finished it yet. I'm going to finish constructing it towards the end of the video to kind of show you the idea and the measurements that I've done for it as well but I think you could definitely play around um, with my idea too and make it thicker or thinner for whatever kind of idea you want it to be for but I was thinking the size this star comes out so this size is the perfect kind of size for the top of a Christmas tree I've got some of those like pencil Christmas trees so they're like really tall and skinny and I feel like this star would be the perfect thing to go on top because I've not had anything proper on top of my trees because I haven't found anything um, but I think this is going to work really nicely so that's what I've tried to create so um, towards the end of the video I will show you that but first of all let's have a look at the actual die set so because it's a showcase I've actually got mine in the real packaged version this time as well and because it's a showcase you get your um, piece with your inspiration on and there's also more inspiration on the back and then inside you've got your instructions of how to put it together you also get your popper wallet which fits in their large die storage folder if you want to put it in there if not they work perfectly just stacked on your shelf or in a big box as well um, and then you get all of your dies with a magnetic sheet too so you've got everything everything to sort of keep it all safe and if you have other die sets that you haven't got storage for yet maybe you've bought some other larger die sets from Crate and Craft that don't come with um, the storage for them um, it's double sided so you could put another set on the back of this die set as well if you want to so Let's, have, let's show you this bit first. So you've got inspiration on the front showing different variations. This one hasn't got the star on the top. This one's got the star on the top but they have cut the detail into the star and then put a backing paper underneath it. And then this one they have put the main star on the top of the box. They've also done them opening differently. As you put this together, I wasn't properly following the instructions because um, I, don't, I didn't feel like you needed to. If you realise what shapes went where and how the drawer would go in and out, you don't really need to follow the instructions but you do have the instructions in there as well but if you look at this one versus this one the drawers open um, on the opposite side so this one the, it's coming out of this side of the point but this one it's coming out this side and that all depends on how you put your drawers together and how you put the box together as well so you do have to be paying attention when you're making everything and I suggest double checking things as well because when you these are all you make these into little diamonds similar to the carousel gift box um, that Tonic brought out in their birthday week celebrations but they're diamond shapes and the drawers actually completely come out of these ones whereas with the carousel they sort of flicked out um, but you've got to be on the ball because all of these need to be the same way round when you put them together you end up with one opening which is where the drawer will go but then when you stick all of these together it's quite easy to accidentally flip one of these up the other way and have two drawers here or two openings for drawers but obviously the drawers wouldn't really want to go in and out that way um, I mean maybe you might be able to get it to work but I found you just want to make sure you're paying attention so all of them go in the same direction so you, you on every side of the star you have drawer and plain panel drawer and plain panel and then also when you're making your drawers as well you want to make sure um, you're putting your drawers together correctly especially if you've already decorated the main body of the box because there are two different ways you can put them round because this is kind of like a parallelogram sort of shape if you put your boxes together one way they'll only fit if you've put your drawer this in this position but if you've put it in the other position this way that you'll have to make your drawers differently and to get these two positions it's literally just taking your whole thing you stuck together and flipping it over so if you wait till the end to decorate the main box then you shouldn't have any issues but it was pretty simple to put together it took me quite a while um, I was putting it together yesterday evening but it's quite enjoyable to put together actually and I do recommend doing it more like assembly line style so there are five of these sort of drawer holders and then there are five drawers and if you do them all assembly line style you're going to make sure that sort of parallelogram shape is the, in the same orientation for each drawer as you're sticking your sides onto it because the sides are all separate individual panels 
but I'll try and explain some of that more um, as I show you the dies as well. And then inside the um, little leaflet you get, you get the all of the instructions. However, I don't know why, but on this one they didn't tell you um, the number of each die cut that you need. So I've just uh, graffitied on mine and written them on. So you need five of this piece, five of this piece, five of the draw bases, but then you need uh, and you need two of the stars to house all of that together and then because you've got five drawers and each of them have four sides you're going to need 20 of this little square but there is actually um, an identical sized square in one of Tonic's um, nested layering die sets you know just their plain edge squares from years ago um, or you could definitely just um, cut them out on your paper trim if you wanted to but the way it goes together these panels don't have side glue tabs you need these pieces which are the corners so technically or the brackets even um, so technically there are two things that you're going to need to cut 20 times so it is kind of worth cutting them 20 times but I also find if you uh, say you've got some other projects on the go or something um, do a load of die cutting and you know get some bits die cut ready for another project as well so you, you don't feel so annoyed at having to run this through your die cutting machine 20 times. Um, I was cutting stuff for... Oh, I was making a little train, uh, one of the little tonic trains. I wanted to make a little Halloween one, so I was die cutting bits for that as well. And I do recommend as well, um, I think I've said this before, but if you are working on um, two or three projects simultaneously and you want to, you know, make the make use of the space on your plate to cut lots of different things for different projects, before you start, take a photo on your phone of your die sets that you're working with and even how they're positioned on your magnetic storage so you can get them back in the, you know, a, a good configuration where they all fit on. And then when you come to finish all your die cutting, you can uh, clean out all your dies, you know, poke all the bits and pieces out and then you'll have a photo of where each die went so just in case your memory fails you and you can't remember what um, die set a specific die came from you'll know exactly which ones are which uh, that's kind of how I get around um, you know working on so many different things at the same time if I take a photo of the die set I don't have to constantly think oh my gosh I've got to remember that this die is from this set and that die is from the other set and everything so I, I do recommend doing that it's also nice just to put all of them in a folder as well and then if you're ever wondering what to make you can kind of flick back through uh, photographs of die sets and get inspired or um, you know feel like you really want to make something that you've just sort of whizzed past um, anyway, I've gone off topic, but you do get the instructions in here. It's really simple to put together. You're literally just combining the two large pieces to create the outer drawer. Then you use put all of them together and you make sure that it goes opening solid piece, opening solid piece as you're putting them together. You sandwich a large star uh, above and below to hold everything together nicely. I did also um, stick them all together on these sides as well. And then it just shows you how to create the drawers. You're literally just putting the side panels onto the sort of parallelogrammy base piece and then you put these corner panels on as well but the one I've done um, I've shown a different way of putting these corner panels on so that the front of your drawer can be decorated differently and you don't see this um, sort of patterned piece. If, you, if you're not that keen on that pattern, you can hide it for the front of the drawer and everything else is hidden because it's inside the box. Um, so I've, I've done that on my box to show that. And then it also shows you how to attach the handles and this piece of the design is there so that the handles, um, you know exactly where they need to go. But um, as I said, I've decorated mine a little bit differently and I actually altered this handle so that I could attach it with brads and then the pieces that I put on the front of the drawer I made sure I stuck them all in the same position and that there was a point in the pattern that I could use on each one to get the handles uh, the brads for the handles in the perfect position so I'll show you that when I show you the sample later as well and it also shows you how you can create baubles from your stars you can just stick two back to back stick that little bauble hanger uh, back to back on the top of it and you could just make decorations for your Christmas tree but later on in the video I will show you um, how I've sort of tried to turn this into a three-dimensional star for the top of your Christmas tree as well and you can use this little bauble hanger just with the circular pieces in the die set as well so you get gorgeous circular sentiments and they work really nicely as baubles too so enough of me rabbiting on let's show you the actual die set so um, I'll walk you through the pieces that are required to make the box. I did just show you them in the instructions, but to see the actual physical dies, 
these two pieces you will need five of each of these two pieces and they create your outer casing for your little drawers to go in and they're really easy to put together if you um, definitely do it assembly line style and look at the instructions realize which glue tabs glue to which position on all of these pieces and make sure you have that sort of like net of both of these stuck together for all five drawers then when you come to put them together you know that they're going to be um, all identical and all the you know perfectly stuck together as well so you need those two pieces to create the five sort of outside cases then you will need two of this largest star to go on the top and the bottom of that piece when you stuck all five of them together. So you've got that piece there as well. This piece is the base for the drawers. So you'll need five of these to create the base for all five of the drawers. And then this piece, which you can actually use as a decorative panel on the outside of your star when it's all together. But this is also the side panels of the drawer. So you know when a, a decorative panel is just a few millimetres smaller than the actual side of the box this work then works perfectly to create the drawer for your little um, star box as well and the size of this is exactly two inches so if you didn't want to have to cut um, 20 of these you could literally just use your guillotine or your paper trimmer to cut some two inch squares um, to make the sides of the box but then you would have to figure out some other way of doing this corner piece if you didn't want to have to cut 20 of those um, but you could literally just use a folded piece of card if you wanted to you know you could cut pieces of card to two inches maybe by um, again two inches by one inch and then score them down half an inch so they're half an inch by two inch you know folded in half and use them as little pieces to attach it so there's loads of different ways of altering this and uh, cutting out some of the extra die cutting if you didn't want to do it you could definitely utilize your paper trimmer and then only have to run things through five five times to get everything cut for the box as well but those are the pieces that create the drawer then this is the piece that creates the handle and for my box that I did I snipped off these pieces so where that uh, score line is there I snipped that off and then I made a hole in this piece and then I curved this central piece to create my little handle I'll just pull a drawer out to show you that so it makes a little bit more sense so this is the same handle piece but I cut off this end piece which is these little bits with the curves on I poked a hole in these and then I just molded this to curve upwards so instead of having a more square sort of handle that goes up across down it's got that curvature to it just to make it a little bit different looking and to just show you another way of you know playing with the handle sort of design and then to go along with that handle design oh I'll just show you this piece as well that is that corner piece that you use to make the drawers as well so I can move that one off and then this is the yeah this is the piece that decorates the front of the drawers if you want to use that I did change mine but the way this then works is that piece goes like that then these are the corner pieces that will be holding the drawers together and this piece will sort of slot in like that and then if you look at the handle piece they've done it so that that actually slots perfectly into that little bit that's there you see you can then actually stick your handles perfectly so you will get the perfect placement of your handles all the way around all five of the drawers for the box and also because it is a five drawer box you can definitely get away with turning it into an advent calendar as well and making five of them and stacking them on top of each other too so um, and I do think this would be really sturdy like that as well and it would look really lovely just standing you could even if you did turn it into a big stack of five of them it would kind of look like a star shaped pillar candle and you can make some kind of like big flame to stick out from the top of it I think that would look quite cool um, but yeah I think it's a, a really lovely box so um, decoration wise for the sides of the boxes so um, as you look at the side of the box let me just show you mine it's probably easier if I show it to you on there so this is the drawer which you have that weird shaped piece to decorate the drawer panel but I've actually decorated mine with the diamond and I will show you that in more detail later but you, then the other piece so you have the opening for the drawer and then you have a solid piece these both decorate that solid piece you've got two different options for designs to go on there so you've got this one with these sort of like circles with a slash through it and this shape is really reminding me of a, a needle threader you know those little cheap um, aluminium needle threaders with the bit of wire that comes out the bottom that top bit really looks like the shape of that 
um, and they're kind of like locked into each other to be a repeating pattern and then you've also got this one as well which I really like it's almost like um, leaf, leaf designs it's, it's very leafy looking um, and again it's a lovely repetitive sort of pattern as well so you've got those two options for decorating that part of the box or the front of the drawers um, depending on how you want to put your handles on and stuff and then for all of the um, well for the top of the box mainly if you didn't want to use the star to decorate um, on one of the samples on the front of that packaging they had just taken this decorative piece and cut it into the star so they did put the star on top of the box to hold it all together but they used um, the detail pattern cut into the star five times to create the decorative piece on the top or you can also use the outside edge and cut your panels and stick them on top of the star as well if you want to and that will create your whole design too or you can just utilize these gorgeous diamond designs I really love diamonds actually and um, they're a really nice uh, tessellating pattern that you can use on your cards as well and I loved on the one of the samples on the front this piece with that sort of leafy design that matches the square one has um, kind of got a curve in it so when you put the five together you get a circle in the center of it um, as well which I really like so you've got that circle sort of emulating in the middle of the actual star but you can also get a circle if you put five of these panels together you can see that circle sort of continues around there as well so those are those extra panels and they both coordinate with the two square panels and you get your outside cutting edge for that as well then for the decoration for the top of the star, if I can get it off the sheet, you have this beautiful piece here. Now, I don't know if you remember, um, I haven't got the name of it and I don't have the die set currently because I just lent it to somebody, but I'm pretty sure it was this exact size and I would have thought that they would have made it coordinate, but there was a die set that came out maybe three... Christmases ago possibly and it had um, a deer in the centre it was a star and it had a deer in the centre with different sentiments that switched out in it and I'm pretty certain that that star is the same shape as, as this one so they don't sell it anymore but if you did have that one from that long ago I will find the name and I'll put it up here just in case you want to search through your stash um, but if you did have that one I think that one that one would work on this box as well as an alternative design to go on the top of the box too because this sentiment is very similar um, to one of the sentiments in that set so I'm, I'm feeling like whoever designed it maybe also designed that set and they've actually made them coordinate together um, but I will put the name of it up there so that you can um, go and see if you can find it in your stash or if you've got a friend that you could borrow it off of um, but I love this design that they've done for this one it, it completely cuts itself so it has a separate cutting edge so this is sort of like a matte and layer or a bubble that you could use behind this as well and then it has gorgeous holly designs and swirls so you've got a, a holly sprig in each of the points of the star and then gorgeous swirls joining it together and when you cut this you will get a solid circle in the centre of it but then to go in that solid centre you have three extra designs and I'm pretty certain these are the same as that other die set um, that I just mentioned so you get the circle as well so you've got a pierced circle that will go in the center or you can find any other circles from your stash maybe you've got the cross stitch circles maybe you've got another brand of like torn edged circles or a distressed circle or something that you could swap out for this as well but you've got that circle there and then you have three different designs that go inside it this one is the largest so they are actually slightly different sizes these two are slightly smaller but this one is the largest and it is again beautiful holly um, this one is actually like outline holly designs whereas the star has more solid holly designs but they work really nicely together and then there's a load of swirly designs in here this is what it looks like cut out I had one extra um, left over from a card that I was doing but perfect for your cards or just turning into um, really quick and simple bauble ornaments for your Christmas tree because you have that little bauble topper or for gift tags as well for your Christmas presents I mean that like that with one of the sentiments die cut and put across it or um a stamp sentiment that you might have on top of that absolutely perfect for a gift tag and then a solid one behind so you could write on the back of it it just makes such quick and easy gift tags 
So that's the first design, the gorgeous holly design. Then we also have this one that says tis the season and it's got the same solid holly that is in the star design. This one works really nicely with that. I love the fonts that they've used. They've gone like for a really stretched out, almost um, art deco sort of font for its and season. And then you've got a scripty the in the middle with some swirly designs as well. I have used all of these on my cards as well. So you'll see them cut out later on. And then we also have this one, which is Happy Holidays. And this is a lovely stretched out kind of font again. Again, giving me that like Art Deco kind of um, feeling. And then there's a few little stars in there as well. And then um, I've already talked about that little die here, which allows you to turn either the star or those circles into baubles. And I have created a bauble to show you as well. But you can see how nicely that works. And any of your other circular um, topper die sets that you might have, maybe even some stamp clubs that are just stamped images. Um, you could sandwich one of these between, um, you know, a, a stamped and coloured one and a, a blank die cut and give it a little loop sort of hanging tag, turn it into a gift tag or turn it into an ornament for the Christmas tree as well or use it for both you, you know you could give it to somebody as a gift tag but then say um, you can also put the gift tag on the Christmas tree as well um, then we have this tiny little die oh, little set of dies um, that I didn't actually end up using but you get this little scalloped uh, rectangle and then you get this solid rectangle that has a cutting edge on it and then it says Noel in fall away letters so you could use the fall away and you can use the actual die cut that it gives you as well just as an alternative um, sentiment. I think that would look really nice in the centre of the holly panel um, because that one doesn't actually have a sentiment in it or you could use that multiple times around the star box as well as a part of the decoration for the panel or just a really simple decoration rather than the main panels as well. Then you have this tiny little die which gives you three little stars that are perfect for decorating as well. I've used that on one of the cards that I've created. And then finally, we have this lovely banner die, which is different to um, any other banner die that I've seen in tonic die sets. It's kind of got like the solid piece here, and then these are cut out pieces, and then you have the solid bit coming behind as well. And then you have five different options for sentiments that will fit inside this banner. So the idea is that you cut one that's your solid, and then you cut one with one of the sentiments in and stick that on top, or you can do two with the sentiment in and shadow them, and then put the solid one behind and then this works really nicely across the circle as well so if you were turning these into little baubles or gift tags you could even put the uh, banner across there and write someone's name in there or write a specific year in there or use um, this die to cut out a photograph and then write so and so from you know 2020 and have that as a, a bauble to hang on the tree or even not even Christmassy you could just have it as some kind of um, decoration or a collection of images on a cork board or a magnetic board or something and make it like a family tree even die cut a photo of somebody and then have the scroll in the foreground with their name on and maybe their age as well so um, loads of ideas of just using those two little pieces together but the five different um, words that can go inside of these I used two of them I used happy holidays and joy so I'll show you those two first so we've got joy like so and then we've also got happy holidays as well so we've got those two designs and I actually combined joy with a Dymo label and I did to the world so you can extend that and turn it into you know uh, proper sort of full sentiment or if you know someone called joy it's perfect for them as well um, or you know you can play around with it and add different other sentiments that you might have to it as well and then finally we have uh, let it snow so that one says let it snow and then we have ho 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 so if you have any Santa images, it works perfectly with that. And it's actually got exclamation marks between each of the hoes as well. And then we have Xmas hugs as well. So a, a, a nice variety of sentiments. There's seven different sentiments um, in the die set. So um, even if this is like one of the only die sets you invest in for Christmas this year, you oh no, you've got eight. You've got eight different sentiments um, and they would work so nicely on your Christmas cards as well. Um, even for like quick and easy Christmas cards, just doing a messy nouveau inky background, maybe playing with embossing folders or stencils or, um, you know, doing the faux embossing folder look with a load of die cuts in the background. And then literally just putting one of these as your sentiment on top of it or 
this one with the banner going across the middle with the sentiment would look fantastic so I think this is a really lovely die set that you can use to create a gift for somebody you can use it to create a 3d ornament for a Christmas tree just a flat ornament for a Christmas tree gift tags smaller ornaments for Christmas trees and your Christmas cards as well so if you haven't uh, felt like you've liked any of the the new stuff for Christmas this year and you're just waiting for that one set that can do everything I think this set is one of those fantastic sets that's going to be so versatile and can keep you busy for ages creating all the different kind of projects that you can do with it so I'm going to put these dies away before I lose them and then I'll come back and show you my samples that I've done so I'll show you the actual gift box first and you can see it's a really lovely substantial sized box. If you go from point to point it is about six and three quarter inches roughly and if you go from sort of the feet of the star to the point it's about six and a quarter inches so it's a really decent sized gift box but it's not a whole gift box it is split into five different quadrants or sections in here can't really call it a quadrant if there's five of them um but they have little parallelogram sort of shaped or little squashed squares, pushed over square sort of shape, little drawers that go inside them. And you can see how you have these corner pieces that hold all of the side panels together. The bottom of the box has uh, glue tabs on, which you use to stick these two inch square pieces to. But then the sides of the squares don't have uh, glue tabs. I think that's mostly because this is also a decorative panel for this box too So they couldn't put glue tabs on it if it was also going to double as a decorative panel onto this So instead they've given you these corner pieces which actually make a nice um, Sort of different addition to the box as well and actually while I've got this one out I can show you that panel you can see how if you cut that panel it would fit in there absolutely perfectly so you could decorate all four sides of your little drawers if you wanted to as well but I decided just to decorate the fronts of my drawers and have these um, as the sides but because I wanted to do something different and I didn't want to use that little panel I wanted to use one of the uh, diamond shaped pieces I actually chose to these corner pieces stick them on the outside for this side but stick them on the inside for the front piece so they're not interfering with my little um, part of a diamond sort of pattern on here and then for this diamond pattern if I get the die so I can show you because obviously I've covered this one up with the brads but so this is the the decorative piece that I've used and underneath where these brads are is this holy piece so you've got this sort of frilly bit with the holy piece it's the bit that creates that circle when you put them all together I just um, looked at the handle decided sort of how deep this sort of um, loopy bit would be and decided the last holes on here would be the perfect place to attach the handle so to get all of them in the exact same position I laid out five of my little front squares took all of the um, die cut and actually as I was doing it I had the square on my glass mat and because it's two inches you sort of visualize the two inch square and then centralize it between the two and then when you add your die cut piece on top make sure the point is at the one inch mark and then you know it's going to be um, in that sort of same central portion of your little drawer front and then the point is touching right at the top of the box and then you know that every one of your drawers is going to look identical and because you have that pattern on it you can make sure every one of your drawers the brads and the handle go in the exact same position then as well so I thought I'd just explain that a little bit further in case you wondered how I managed to get my handles in the same places all the way around and how I lined up the diamond pattern on there as well. But I think it turned out really nicely like that. I really love how this turned out. Um, and I really think it's worth spending the time making one of these because not only can you have it this way and, you know, have little gifts in all of these little sections, you could divide up a box of celebrations and have the different ones in the different compartments. You can, if you hold that drawer as you tip it, you can stand it like this as well. So it can actually be um, a standalone decoration as well as actually being practical with the drawers in there too to store things you could have it as a decoration so for example I've made this one in silver and blues to give to my sibling because that's their favorite color combination but it's Christmassy because I've decorated it like this however they like having stars up all year round so the back of the box 
you could bring out some other dies that you have in your stash and decorate the back of the box to be the rest of the year. So like uh, an inspirational quote, you could put their name on it, whatever you like, but then they could keep it up all year round because the side panels don't look Christmassy. So if you had it standing up like this, um, you could then flip it round at Christmas time and have the tis the season, but the rest of the year you could keep it this way round and have something non-Christmassy and just to do with stars or to do with the person you've given it to as well. So I think this is such a lovely one um, and I've really enjoyed doing this. I'm kind of gutted I didn't get it ahead of time so I could have had longer to play with it and make a few other ideas. But I really like this one. I think it's really cool. And the drawers work so nicely as well. Even though they're parallelogrammy shaped, you kind of feel like, oh, I don't know if that's going to go together properly. But whoever's... Um engineered the die set has really thought about exactly how it all goes together as always with all tonic die sets they're always really well thought out with all of the the maths and the engineering taken care for you so you don't have to worry about any of that um but yeah i really love how this turned out um and i love this color scheme so i decided to make a matching kind of bauble it's not 100 percent matching but the same colors but i used the happy holidays on this one and i did it so it is double-sided so it'll go really nicely on a christmas tree or or you could just have it dangling in the window and then it would look nice on the outside and the inside of the window as well or if you only did it on one side this would be the perfect sort of gift tag and you already have that place to attach some twine or string to to attach it to your present as well and that is the happy holidays cut out and that is the tis the season cut out so they're really lovely intricate designs then I also, again, love this, so I wanted to make a matching card. So um, this time I have put the silver die cut just onto the white, so it gives a different look to the silver onto the navy blue, but I've used the exact same um, sentiment in the centre to kind of make a sort of coordinating pair. So if you did give this to somebody as a gift, the Christmas card would look lovely standing next to it um, on the mantelpiece as well. And then these portions here, so I added one uh, silver star in the background and you can see how nicely this kind of fits onto my small sort of size of card. Um, these two legs of the star just come in like a few millimetres from the edge um, and you're only really cutting off those two points and the top little point as well. But it fits on there really nicely just to add some pattern. But because I had extra empty areas and because for all of my drawers I had used a part of that diamond, I had this bottom part of the diamonds left over. So I just decided decided to stick some of the bottom parts of the diamonds onto this card to fill in those open areas and then I've just added the sentiment on there and some of these little silver dome gems from my stash onto the berries as well and I did that on this and on the bauble in the centre of those little stars they've got those little um, domed gems so that's the matching Christmas card to go with it. And then I thought, well, um, some of the other elements are more like holly elements. So I wanted to go with a different colour scheme. Um, because I've already done the sort of silver and blues, I thought I'd go with the sort of golden green colour scheme as well. And again, show some more ideas of how to just use those beautiful patterns. So... Um, you could have made this star in greens and golds uh, with some of these designs on and then you then have a matching card to go with that as well. So I've done this one which is just using lots of the diamonds and uh, one of the banners. I did the Happy Holidays banner on this one and I've just mixed in a couple of the green card stocks from the Texture Craft Perfect. This is fern green and pine tree green and then I've also brought in the um, Inca Gold Iridescent card stock. I love that one so much. Then for this one, I've kept with the same colour scheme, um, but only gone with the darker cardstock. I think this one might actually be avocado green, um, that darker cardstock. And then I've done the joy and then to the world with my Dymo labeler. And that small little star die works perfectly for little scattered elements to decorate your cards as well, or your boxes, depending on what decorative pieces you're putting on your boxes as well. Because you could have kept uh, this, if you wanted to make a matching card to this one, for instance, don't put the holly on, just have the, it would be green, um, star, put this holly in the centre and then use the joy to the world in the centre of the circle in the middle of that and then because these areas would just be green you could either use um, green on green maybe like this idea and have some extra bits of pattern poking out or you could just put some of these small little stars on just to accent the corners as well so you can really make any of your card ideas match your box and vice versa as well um, but I really like how this one turned out too and you could do this with any of the circular sentiments I'd already just used 
the other two actual sentiments so I decided to go with the holly on this one and I've just shadowed them with that darker green and the Inca gold as the shadow behind and you only needed two of these ones and one white one to make this card that's why I had the extra white one left over because I thought I was going to need another one but I ended up cutting half of the circle off putting it here and then cutting these into unequal quarters and using those um, to fill in those final two corners as well so I really love how all of these cards turned out and then as I was actually as I was constructing this one I was thinking I wonder if you could um, use all of the side panels just to make a solid star and then I thought well a solid star that thick is not really going to be useful for anything I mean you could just make it as the decoration to stand up and not even bother with the drawers just make it a solid star using some of the um, the panels that are in there I'm sure you could find a panel that would work perfectly just to fill in that gap um, but then I was thinking well it would make such a fantastic topper for the Christmas tree so I was literally just trying this before I started filming this this video so I haven't finished it but I wanted to show it on camera so that I could show you how to finish it I've cut it out of that I can't remember the name again sea foam green sea salt green something like that um, because this would go nicely with my Christmas tree so I'm making it for the top of my Christmas tree um, and so what I've done so far is I've cut two stars two of the large solid stars out and you can get both of them out of an A4 piece you've just got to be careful with your placement so what I do is I place the die on the card then I use my scissors to cut as close to the die as I can and then when you take this off and flip it round to cut another one you have enough card left to cut a second one out of one piece of A4 and then I wanted to make it just shallow I'm just going to make a solid star that's shallow so that you could put it on the top of a Christmas tree or you could just have it standing as a little decorative sign and you could decorate it as well saying like Merry Christmas 2022 or something um, but I wanted to make it three dimensional but not as three dimensional as this so uh, the way I've done this I cut strips of card so just taking the length of the A4 piece and cut them to four centimeters wide I cut a whole piece of card but you actually only need two of these so I cut them to four centimeters wide then I took my scoreboard and I scored a centimeter in from each side so that's a centimeter glue tab two centimeters for the depth a centimeter glue tab so whatever depth you want just make sure it's coordinating to that and the reason why I did a centimeter um, as the glue tab was because I've got a nine millimeter red liner tape so I thought that would work really nicely then but you could go with whatever kind of tape width you want for your glue tab it doesn't have to be a centimetre um, but you need two of these basically and then I was experimenting with how I needed to score them now my scoreboard on the inches side I measured the sides of the star it's slightly smaller than two and a half centimetres so it wouldn't work on the centimetre side but the inches side of my scoreboard only has half inch increments so I had to go with my um, tonic super trimmer which has that scoring blade that you can put into it so that I could score two and a quarter inches because each side of this star is two and a quarter inches so these are all the measurements so you're basically going to have two long strips like this and you're going to go along and score them you firstly you're going to score just like a rough sort of about one centimeter as a glue tab then from that line you want to score two and a quarter inches 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 and I think you get five sides on each one piece so you'll have uh, a little glue tab five sides and then a waste piece that you cut off um, and then this is all of the measurements if you want to see it written down it's four centimeters two centimeters two and a quarter inches and then all you do is I actually stuck my tape on first so I put a long strip of tape all the way along there and then you just use your scissors and um, the little snips are really nice because they've got a sharp point on the end and you just come in at a diagonal just there to give yourself your glue tabs um, and then you have your main side piece and you would need two of these and each one should give you a glue tab five panels at two and a quarter inches and then you'll cut off a tiny little extra piece at the end and that's enough to make your 3d star you can see I've started sticking them all on I have just got two more sides here to stick and then one final glue tab to stick together so I thought I'd do that on camera to show you and then we can see together how we can get this to work now actually I started here at the bottom because I'm thinking if I did want to put this on top of the Christmas tree you could um, maybe beforehand or you could just snip into it now cut a sort of semicircle there it kind of depends how um, 
wide the top sticky up bit of your Christmas tree is, whether you've got a real Christmas tree or um, an artificial Christmas tree. Um, so I'm going to leave this until I actually put it on the tree at Christmas when I decorate. But I've done it so that the join is, well, the, one of the joins is at the sort of between two feet of the star because that's kind of how you would want it to sit on your Christmas tree and then it just works out that the other join is at the top of the star because you've got five on each piece of the two pieces and then you're just snaking it around the whole star design just taking off your double sided tape and then lining it up just along the sides like that and then this one is going to come in like that and then that glue tab is going to stick up onto that final one there so we can glue those two in And pull that round, get that lined up and then from the inside here you can get those two sides lined up and then just push that glue, final glue tab around to secure it all together and then you can see we're left with all of these glue tabs. Now you because you're cutting these glue tabs yourself you could um, think about how you're cutting these because technically here you could have cut that at a steeper angle or we can just utilize that those glue tabs overlap and use it to hold the points in place before we start sticking the top star on which might be quite helpful actually but that is how it's all sort of coming together so what I'm going to do is take off the red liner off of that one and I'm going to push that point together from underneath and check that that's going to be a good point when we put the star on top of there and it is so we'll just go around and do that to the whole star piece we're just going to take off the um, double sided off whichever one's decided to fall on the bottom and then we're going to press that other glue tab into it and make sure that that will line up with the point of the star that we've got it at a good angle and then do the same on all five of those points just double checking that it's going to go on really nicely when we put the final star on top and obviously if you were making more of these you'd probably want to have decorated these bits first um, but because I wanted to get this done so that I could uh, film the video for you I haven't decorated yet um, so I'm probably going to have a little bit of difficulty decorating afterwards but um, I wanted to show how this went together and you know see if it actually worked as well but uh, that should work well for the whole star all the way around so now we know that that's all in a good position we can take off those last five um, pieces of tape on the glue tabs and then we'll be able to place the other star on top as well so um, where we have put our joining glue tabs let's find the bottom one so that is the bottom so we wanted this to be the top of the star so I think I'm going to line up with that top point first just to make sure it's, um, you know, if, if it's off on the bottom it, you won't see it as much. You kind of want it to be um, nicely lined up towards the top because that's probably where you're going to look at it the most. And then you can just line it up all the way around. You can put uh, wet glue on top of that tape if you wanted to as well um, just so you could pull it off if you needed to. But I use red liner tape a lot now so I kind of just get used to, um, you know, sticking it on first time. So that is our little three dimensional star and I think that's going to look so lovely on the top of a Christmas tree. It's really light because it's just made out of the texture craft perfect and um, you can decorate it however you want. So I'm probably going to use the decorative panels actually and put the holly on top of there. You could have um, Tis the Season or Happy Holidays on the top of it. You could make a central circle panel that you change out for each year. You could have... Um, maybe velcro or maybe just removable glue dots or something and actually have a circle that you've made a few of for the next few years that you could swap out and have the specific year so you could do a 2022, 2023 etc um, for the top of the tree as well um, there's so many different ideas of ways of decorating it you could put um, any of your little characters that you have from stamp clubs or die cut characters um, you could even do like a, a shaker if you have the really old star shaker that Tonic did with the blister that coordinated you could have a little mini um, star shaker in the centre of it as well you can sort of decoupage up your layers if you want to you can keep it really flat, you could just keep it solid you could make it out of hollow waves or um, Inca gold cardstock depending what kind of metallic you use in your Christmas decoration you could do it out of a pattern paper if you wanted to as well so I think this is a really cool way of... Um, 
of creating one of these stars. I'm definitely going to make a few more of these whilst I remember how to do it. So I've got enough for um, the three trees that I have downstairs with this colour scheme. So I really love that. Um, and just to recap again, you will need to cut the length of A4 twice. You'll need two lengths of A4 cut at four centimetres. Then you score them all the way along with one centimetre and then you've got a two centimetre gap and then another one centimetre glue tab and then you do a little random extra piece at the end for a glue tab then you do two and a quarter inches five times along the card snip off that final piece that's left there and then you'll have the perfect piece to go and snake all the way around the edge of your star design as well so hopefully that made sense so I really hope you enjoyed this up close video looking at Tonic Showcase number 29 which is the little star gift box um, and hopefully you've loved it as much as I have. I really enjoyed this one. I think it's such a lovely design and it would go really nicely if you got last year there was a craft kit that had that 3D um, star box that was kind of like one of those origami stars and it kind of popped up into a 3D box. Um, this on the top of your tree with some of those decorating your tree would look fantastic as well and you could coordinate them uh, with the same colours of Craft Perfect card as well or the same Nouveau products and stuff on them too. Um, but anyway, I hope you enjoyed this up close video. Thank you so much for watching. Um, don't forget as always there will be affiliate links in the description box below the video so if you haven't got hold of this kit yet or this set yet and you want to um, then do check out those links because I really do appreciate you taking the time to click on them. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you again in the next video. Bye!